Mentalism has a problem. It's always been the outsider in the magic world, and folks like Penn and Teller have routinely put down the use of mentalism, especially when it's not accompanied by a disclaimer. You didn't read my mind just then. No, there's no such thing. It's, right. it's absolutely lies. But Perhaps even more common than that is ADHD card magicians thinking that mentalism is boring. And you know what? They might be right. As a performing mentalist myself, I am keenly aware of the problem that you can only ask someone to think of the first letter a few times before it becomes repetitive, anticlimactic, and boring. So how do we solve this problem of being a bit slower and potentially less entertaining than other forms of mystery entertainment? In a word, presentation. The book we're going to examine in today's episode purports to solve this problem of boredom by giving you engaging effects and presentations for your mentalism. The question we have to ask ourselves is, does it actually solve the problem. The book is by Paul Brook, a British performer who has written a number of books on the subject over the years and has been working as a professional mentalist for some time. I'll drop some links down in the description below so that at the end of the video you can check out his website. He has a number of free mentalism effects that he's offering to you so that you'll be able to check out his style and get a flavor for what he has to offer. I first came across Paul Brooks thinking via his podcast, Ask Paul. There was a lot of great thinking in the podcast, especially about mentalism and the business side of magic. And although Paul is no longer creating content via the podcast, the tables have turned slightly. He has seen Erudite Magic and reached out to me to see if I would be interested in reviewing some of his material. He's written a number of books, so which one are we talking about today? It's Certified Mentalism, and this is the special edition, but we'll get into that in a bit about the differences between the standard and special edition. Before we get too deep into this review, I want to share a message from our sponsor, Don's Magic and Books. Don is a longtime sponsor of this show because like me, he wants you to get good magic books at reasonable prices. And to that end, he is offering 10% off almost everything on his website if you use the code FALL during your checkout this week. I don't think I have to tell you how great a deal this really is because Don has always been fair with his pricing and he carries so many of the books that are out of print and hard to find. And in fact, he just acquired another huge library that he'll be adding over the coming weeks. So if you've been looking for some of these hard to find and out of print books, now is the time to get over to his website at donsmagicandbooks.com and start looking for some of those gems that you've been wanting to add to your library. By the way, if you order $20 or more of media items within the United States, you will qualify for a full refund of your shipping charges. So with 10% off free shipping and a plethora of magic books from which to choose, you can't go wrong by shopping with Don. So do that this week. I'll drop some links down in the description below. Back to the review. So, Certified Mentalism. The standard edition of the book is about 200 pages long, and if you get the special edition, it adds another approximately 80 pages with four new routines. So what kind of material has Paul published in a book like Certified Mentalism? It's obviously all mentalism, but it's a pretty good mix of walk around and stand up material. From my observations and listening to his podcast, I believe that Paul earned his chops by performing walk around mentalism and now performs a good number of stand up shows for more formal occasions. As far as the tricks go, there is quite a good bit of variety, although a few of the tricks did feel slightly derivative. Let me elaborate on that point. As an example, there are a couple of routines that use basic shapes We you ask your participant to combine those to formulate a more complex image, and then you essentially reveal what that image is. So there are two routines that are very similar in its effect as I imagine it would be described by the audience. In addition, there are two password generation effects, authentication and the password generator. Methodologically, they are very different, but as I just mentioned, I believe from the audience point of view, they would be described as very similar effects. Normally, I think it would be a benefit to have multiple methods for the same type of effect, but this book honestly just isn't dense enough for me to consider that to be a true benefit. However, in spite of a few duplicate effects, there are also a number of items in here and plots that I really haven't seen a lot of other places in the mentalism world. 
For example, you can have the participant state what time you typically get up and be able to display that on your mobile phone. There's a stand-up opener where you have a coffee cup and you're asking someone for their favorite beverage and their name, and all of that becomes predicted in this cup that you've been holding. There's some fairly good detailed psychology behind why psychological forces work and how Paul deploys them. Like I said, all of the contents of the tricks are listed on the website, so you can check that out to determine if this material appeals to you. Paul claims in both the title to the book and within the pages that all of this is real world material, and I don't doubt that for a minute. In fact, he gives a lot of the origin stories behind the tricks about how he came up with it in specific performing situations. That being said, I've never actually witnessed Paul Brook perform for a paying audience, so I can't tell you how this material might play. And that brings me in a roundabout sort of way to the writing style. All of the tricks begin with a written description of the effect as perceived by the audience. This is not the simple effect like you normally see in a card book. No, it is a play-by-play -play and blow-by-blow -blow of the presentation of the trick, patter and all, except for the parts that actually make the trick work. That comes later. This makes the book a bit dry to read, in my opinion, which reinforces to my way of thinking that this book is a book of presentations and not necessarily new methods or effects. And that means that there was a slight crisis of identity for me as I read this book. Let me explain what I mean by talking about the two different versions of the book. The special edition of the book is expensive. There's no two ways about that. The standard version of the book isn't cheap, but it's fairly reasonably priced at 39 pounds or approximately 45 US dollars. However, this special edition is 99 quid or 115 US dollars. Wow. The implication inherent in that value proposition is that the four routines included in the special edition are worth an extra $70. Because of that fairly large price difference, I want to share a few details about the special edition section of the book to help you make an informed decision about whether you might find value in that edition. First up is a presentation of Larry Becker's Sneak Thief, which I actually thought was a great presentation. It adds a kicker ending to the whole procedure, as well as the normal kind of psychometry type routine where you're determining who wrote down or drew what on a piece of paper. Paul's idea for the presentation I thought was really great. And he tells you within the write-up that this routine takes up the bulk of his corporate shows, clocking in anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes that gives us a little bit of insight into the types of performance situations and audiences to which Paul finds himself accustomed. These are audiences who can appreciate a slow burning effect, and that may not be for everyone. But that being said, the methodology for what makes Larry Becker's routine work is not explained in this book. So you'll have to acquire your own version of Sneak Thief, which you can do by buying Stunners Plus or a derivative version, which can be found in books like Handsome Jack, etc. Anyway, you're starting to see a theme here right away on the first trick of the special edition that you'll need to spend extra money just to interpret what you're reading. The second effect in the special edition is a mental yarn presentation, which was good. However, again, mental yarn itself is not taught, so you'll need to go acquire that on your own. It's not an expensive trick, and many of you probably already have it, but I just wanted you to know that, again, you're gonna read through this, and the method isn't explained. It's just a presentation for the mental yarn, although it is a good presentation. The third routine is psych forces leading to revealing two different thought of images. This seems to be one of Paul's favorite routines to perform, walk around, and I can see why, as it presents a lot of hard hitting magic very quickly, but to perform it again, you'll need your own peak device or impression pad. Last, but certainly not least, is Paul's multi-stage book test routine. And to present the best version of this routine, you will require a gimmicked book that allows you to reveal a word completely hands off. It also uses Mark Paul's triple A book test, which again is not taught here, but is referenced. And I think it's one of my favorite book tests. So back to this special edition, in addition to spending the $70 extra on these routines, you're going to spend at least that in acquiring the props or the instructions to perform what is described there. Which brings me back to the crisis of identity. If you already have the props or the instructions to know how to 
do these effects, then you likely already have your own presentations that you've built because you're probably an experienced performer. If you're just a beginner, then you won't even know how to do these tricks by the time you end up reading them. And you really won't know whether you want to buy those effects because there's not enough information to tell you whether that method will work for you. So in some ways, I really can't tell who the intended audience is for this special edition of the book. It's not beginners because they won't have the props to perform it and will likely be disappointed buying something and not getting the methodology. And I don't really think that it's experienced performers because if they already have these props and are using them, then they likely already have worked out their own presentations. All in all, I liked a lot of the plots and presentations that were provided and feel that it gave me a lot to think about that I don't always think about with my mentalism. However, I found a lot of the material as written to be a little bit process heavy for my taste. Definitely check out some of Paul's free downloads to see if this material suits your style and then consider buying the standard edition of the book if you think that this is the type of stuff that your audiences would appreciate. I think at 45 US dollars for the standard edition, it represents reasonable, although not necessarily exceptional value. While I'm not really sure that this book solves the inherent problem of mentalism potentially being boring, you can check out this video of my top mentalism recommendations to see the books I think do solve that problem. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.